All right. So I was telling John we're going to do a little arm ab challenge with a little sun salutation mixed in. Okay. So best you can, let's take a nice deep breath in, interlacing your fingers, press the palms up to the sky, and lean to one side and really feel the ribs open. So you hold the pose, not the breath, and come back to center. Try the other side. The deeper the breath, the better the stretch between those ribs. And then back to center. Let's bring the arms down and start to twist, warming up the spine. Shoulders down, elbows up, nice tall back. Getting into some kind of rhythm with your breathing. And if possible, in and out through your nose only. Got another 15 seconds. See if you could twist a little deeper. And then back to center. Let's take a deep breath in. And now opening the whole side body from fingertip to hip. A breath or two. And back to center. Up to the sky first and over. And then bring it back to center. So warming up the shoulders further, inhaling up, exhale down, fast or slow, it's up to you. Fan yourself. about 20 seconds left couple more and then go ahead push shoulders are down and they're back a little arms are back a little so you start to feel that opening all the way across from wrist through the bicep shoulder chest arms back a little bit more and then hands on your knees and some big exaggerated shoulder rolls try to get rid of some of that tension that may have been building up and we're going to inhale deeply scrunch the shoulders up and exhale drop and you're going to go below neutral inhale up and exhale, drop. Good, and a couple of neck rolls. So you could keep the shoulders down. If you have a lot of creaking, cracking, or any neck problems at all, you're gonna scrunch your shoulders up and then do your rolls. That just supports the vertebra a little bit more. If you can't stand all the creaking and cracking. <laughs> and if you haven't switched directions, do that. And then put your head back on in center and let's lie down onto your back. So we're having your prop nearby, your block or your pillow. And onto your backs, big full body stretch. This is your wake up yawn. You can deepen the breath, you can stretch the body longer. And pressing the low back down, opposite arm, opposite leg. You can go slow and controlled. You can pick it up a little bit faster. 
If you have any back issues, then you're going to do it with a little bit of a bend in the knee. So you're still warming up the hips and legs, but you're not taxing the low back as much. So that's up to you. Exhale when the arm leg goes up and inhale down. Great assessment pose to turn in, tune in, not turn in, tune in to the legs, hamstrings, hips, feeling the tightness as it relates to the left side of the body, right side of the body. I'm going to go about another minute. How close are you to touching the toes on your right and the left? Last 30 seconds. Almost there. And then one more on each leg. And knees into your chest. So now easing the low back. I like to rock left to right, but if you want to be still, that's fine too. And a couple of ankle rolls in each direction. Really exaggerate the point and flex and switch direction. And squeeze, scrunch all 10 toes. And release. And squeeze and scrunch. And release. So we're going to take your prop. I mean, it's a block. Whatever you have, towel, pillow, between knees, inner thighs. A little bit of a flex in the foot to protect the knee. And then arms out to the side and some rotation warming up. Maybe get some back cracks, realigning the vertebra. You want a big wingspan here. So your arms are out reaching through the fingertips. Palms are against the floor to support you a little bit here. Try to relax the head and the shoulders. We don't want to be collecting any extra tension. We probably have enough already. Less than a minute. I'm still getting back cracks <laughs> a minute in. Last 15 seconds. Couple more. And then back to center. So if you scoot it off your mat, get back on your mat, take your prop out, and feet are going to be flat on the floor. Drop the knees out, line the bottoms of the feet up with each other, reclining cobbler's pose, and then arms over your head, grabbing opposite elbow. So here, your lower back wants to just arch off the floor. Leave that alone. Let that happen. Don't activate and press down. I really want you to just release and relax here. I like to do little tiny bounces. 
You don't want to do big aggressive bounces. That's not good. Or you could even rock a little left to right. But focus on taking extra deep inhale, exhales to further stretch out the ribs, oxygenate the body. Releasing tension in the belly, in the jaw. And we're going to maintain the same position, the cobbler's pose, but moving the feet out further, about a foot and a half. And this is called diamond pose, so reclining diamond pose. And then switch the grip of your arms, so the other forearms on top. Again, we're relaxing the low back, not pressing it into the floor. Relax the glutes, the belly, and deepen the breath. Sometimes it really takes closing your eyes to be able to tune into any aches or pains you have. Maybe you have so much on your mind, you can't really feel it unless you get rid of one of those senses and just shut down the eyes and feel through every inhale, exhale, what you're still gripping you didn't even realize, what hurts you didn't even realize, or what feels good. Last 10 seconds. And then slowly release the arms. You can use the hands on the outside of the thighs to bring the knees back together and into your chest. And first happy baby of the day. Well, not for me. <laughs> You're gonna rock left to right. Pull the knees in. So try to relax the legs. And the arms do all the work, holding the weight of the legs. Pull the shoulders back. Keep trying to be square to the ceiling like you're holding a tray and then gently release. So take your prop underneath your hips for um, lifting the hips a little bit. When we do our leg raises, brings you into a little bit more of a back extension so you get deeper in the abdominals. Hands between block and butt, whether you're on a towel or a pillow and legs straight up to the sky. So just 30 seconds here, lightening up the legs, encouraging lymph drainage, and maybe snuggle the shoulders under a little bit and try to find the position where your hands are here to support you, but you're not crowding up the shoulders into your ears. Okay, let's inhale the legs down and exhale up. We're used to this one in our warm up, but as I said, today we're gonna do a little bit of a abdominal and arms mashup. It's summertime and those are the biggest complaints I get. <laughs> Help me with my arms, help me with my abs. So I kind of combined maybe 10 yoga moves that target all of that. Inhale down, exhale up. Legs are glued together, strong and straight. You sort of want to choose whether you're pointing or flexing the feet. You don't just want floppy fish feet. You want to engage the legs. One more minute. Heels kiss the floor every time they go down. That gives you a little extra stretch in the hip flexors, which are also going to work a little bit today. Last 20 seconds. What are those shoulders doing? Are they up into your ears? Or are you keeping them relatively released and relaxed? Two more. And then you're holding the legs straight up to the sky. Okay, you might need to readjust your prop. You could keep your hands there. I like to release them now. And we're gonna go out and straddle and together. Inhale out, exhale together. Let's flex the feet. And always keeping the legs a little bit closer to your face rather than closer to the front of the mat like this. This is going to just strain the back. 
And right now, we're really just interested in warming up, exhausting groin inner thigh. So when we stretch, it just surrenders. And we get deeper into the stretch quicker. Thirty seconds. Here too. Do you feel more one side? Do you feel restricted today? Do you feel loose? You guys are saying it's a little humid. Sometimes that really works in your favor as far as your musculature and working out in the morning and stretching. It's better than the cold weather. A couple more. And we're gonna hold the legs out and straddle now and surrender to the stretch. Try to let go. It's gonna be a lot harder if you fight it the entire time. <laughs> and same rule applies here. Legs are closer to your face rather than the front of your mat. You can weigh down the inner thighs and make it a little more challenging. You could support the outer thighs if it's just too much for you right now. I always like to rock a little left to right so I know I'm not gripping excessively anywhere. But you could really feel how deep the stretch gets quickly because we did that out and in first. So your, your inner thigh is just screaming. It wants to rest, it wants to go deep. No, there's no more fight left in it. <laughs> so about 30 more seconds here. Deep breath, shoulders released. Even on the exhale, let go of some of the tension in the stomach. And then hands to the outside of the thighs. Bring the legs together. And one more happy baby here. If your hips are up on a prop, when you do happy baby, it's more of a mid to upper back release feels kind of good a lot of people hold tension there if you're working at the desk a lot if you drive a lot or just plain old hold your tension in your shoulders okay let's go feet flat and take the block out and we're going to extend the legs on the ground so our first move is going to be roll-ups and level one is reaching level two is hugging your arms into your chest level three hands behind the head level three being the hardest so what I want you to do, because it's a two minute thing, is I want you to resist the down, right? I don't want you to just clunk down and then roll up and use a lot of momentum. I want you to really use the muscles. So roll down slowly. It's not a race. It's not about counting how many reps. It's just about getting deep into that muscle group. And maybe you start out level two or three and towards the end, you have to reach out. You're just a little taxed. Inhale down and exhale up. Smooth as you can. Might not be smooth every day, but it will get better and better the more that you do this. One more minute. And 30 seconds. Maybe I should not have eaten right before this class. I'm becoming acutely aware. <laughs> I seem to do that all the time. Mm -mm. 
<clears throat> couple more here. Let's do one more all the way down, up, and then down onto your back. So before we move on, we're going to just do a one minute bicycle move. Hands behind your head, knee to elbow, and do it slow. So a lot of times I see people racing through this, slow and controlled. The extended leg is as low to the ground as you can, and you're breathing. You're twisting deeply, trying to get that elbow to touch the outer knee. Real tight squeeze. Thirty seconds. What a difference a minute makes, right? As opposed to our two-minute moves. A minute is nothing. We fly through it. One more. And knees into your chest. Rock left to right. Just release any excess tension and you're going to flip it over onto your stomach for cobra push-ups. Okay, so this has a double purpose. We're stretching out the core, which we're gonna work so deeply today, and we're working the arms. So palms are flat and they're a little behind the chest and fingers are spread nice and wide. And you're gonna inhale, straighten the arms and feel how you stretch the anterior spine and exhale, lower in control. Elbows stay tight into your body. Inhale and exhale, okay? Now, this will start to get a little bit tough. If you need to take a mid-set break, that's fine. Just rest on your stomach for a breath or two and regroup when you're ready. I want you to finish each pose, get long shoulders out of your ears. You can even lift the chin and lower in control. Thirty seconds. Squeeze, lift, stretch, lower. Cobra's so good for opening anterior spine, just, just a band-aid, a total fix, not a band-aid, a total fix for your posture. One more. And then bring it back into a nice wide knee, big toe touch, child's pose. Arms extend and head drops down. So anytime you're doing those deep back bends, we always want to give a moment of this forward nurturing bend for the back. And then we're going to flip it back over onto your back. So this is a challenge, this one. We're going to do it one minute on each side. They're leg climbers. So let, bending the left knee, if the left foot is close to the body, it's harder. If you push it away from the body, it's a little easier. Right leg is extended, and you're gonna use your hands to climb up that leg and tap your toe, and then back down, or as close to your toe as you can. So use the arms, climb up, and bring it down. It's a little harder than it looks. <laughs> Do the best you can. One minute on each side. Don't forget to breathe, stretching the legs, working the abdominals, stoking the fire. You're probably going to start getting, when you do a lot of core work, you stoke that belly fire and you get really heated quick. Climbing up more than halfway on this side. Again, the beauty of a one minute move as opposed to a two minute move. Okay, and last one, boop, and on your back, switch. 
right knee bent, left leg long, and go. You might find easier on one side. That's an imbalance in the core that needs to be addressed. You might not be able to touch your toe right now. That's fine. That'll happen when the hamstring opens a little bit further. Twenty more seconds. Couple more. Last one. And knees into your chest. Rock left to right, and let's rock a couple times forward and back. Just massage out that back. And coming up to seated, easy cross leg or comfortable seated position. It's neither here nor there how you're sitting for this one. Arms are coming out and we're going to flap. Again, a little bit, looks a little easier than it actually is. I'm gonna try and not stop. Arms are strong and straight. You're sitting up tall. If it's hard for you to sit, you could even stand and do this or um, sit on your prop. So claiming your space, fanning your anger, warming and toning those shoulders. This move is said to displace your anger. So if you see me walking down the street like this, you understand what's going on. <laughs> when it gets too hard and you feel like stopping, don't. <laughs> Just go faster. Just arms straighter. Breathe deeper, you're halfway there, you can do this. Nice toned arms without any ex uh, external weights, just functional weight training with your body weight. Heart a little harder than it looks, shoulders down. If you have a lot of clicking in your shoulders, your hands can come a little more forward. Otherwise, they're straight out to the side. If you want a little chest stretch, you can bring them back or you can just go through all of it, right? Try it all. You got 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. Tall through the top of your head, shoulders out of your ears. I was in a class once where we did it for four minutes. I still have scars from that. <laughs> and then hands on your knees. Good job. Nobody quit. I love it. Big shoulder rolls. Up, back, down. Up, back, down. If you want to do a couple forward and feel the upper back a little bit after that move. And back onto your back. So if you want to watch me first. Better to put your prop under your hips, but you don't have to. And again, for extra support, hands are between block and butt. Legs straight up to the sky, bend the knees, soles of your feet together. So you're in this, um, in yoga, Baddha Konasana pose, or cobbler's pose, or butterfly pose, and you're gonna bring the pinky toe side of the foot closer to the ground and you're going to do little frog pulses here okay little frog pulses if you don't have anything under your hips make sure your hands are there to support your back okay the best you can you want those toes the pinky toes parallel to the floor and you're not straightening all the way it's just a little pulse like frog legs but deep abdominals and your little sneak attack, your little added bonus is groin, inner thigh. Nice leg toner. If you need a mid-set break, just drop those feet down, let them stretch out a second, and then regroup when you can. Something very miraculous about a two-second break sometimes.
Get in a rhythm with your breathing. This is a pretty challenging move. Not doing yoga poses today per se, but yoga moves. Last 30 seconds. Dig deep. Find a way. Fifteen seconds. Send a little sympathy my way. I've already done this class twice today. It's my third time today. Still trying to keep a smile on for you. <laughs> two more. One and two. Knees into your chest. Ease the back. If you want to do a happy baby here, go ahead. If you want to just open the legs and get a little stretch, whatever feels right for you. And then legs down and take the prop out. So more of a traditional move. We're going to flip it back over onto the stomach and into downward facing dog. Okay, so let's just enjoy the down dog for a moment first. Pressing the chest towards your thighs. Make sure your feet are even. Sink your heels. Send your tailbone up to the sky and take a peek at your hands. Make sure they're even with each other. Essentially middle finger-ish, point straight ahead. Palms are flat, hands fully plugged into the floor. Big deep breath, as deep as you can in the pose. And now we're gonna go, so um, an upper body move again, but an abdominal stretch. So you're gonna inhale into up dog, toes tucked up dog. So it's a little added element of difficulty. And exhale, down dog. You've done this before with me. Inhale, up dog. Really exaggerate the pose. And downward dog. Feel the stretch in the shoulders. You're working the arms. And also opening anterior spine again, that core. This is a great yoga move. It truly opens every joint in your body. So if you're gonna go play golf, tennis, go for a run, it's a great idea to do two minutes of this. So from wrists to toes, just getting every joint warm, lubricated, open. You're more than halfway there. Could always take a mid-step break into child's pose or just hang out in down dog till you feel ready to continue. Smile on your face. Less than 30 seconds. A few good ones. Last one. And then bring it back into child's pose. Wide knees. Big toes touch, head down to the ground. Let's extend the arms out and take three deep breaths. Feel the back expand all the way through the shoulder, upper arm, belly, hips as far back towards your heels as you can. And we're gonna come, this is a challenge. I am challenging you, I hereby challenge you. We're gonna do a one minute plank if you have shoulder issues and you'd rather do a forearm plank, that's perfectly fine. Wherever you are, in the middle of it, if you have to tap the knee down for a moment, that's fine. Till one day you're strong enough to hold a solid minute. You want your wrist joint right underneath your shoulders. And we're going to press all the way back through the heels. See how my body's in one line. I'm not here. I'm not sagging the hips. One nice line. Like... A wheelbarrow could go right up my ankles, out my head. Push the floor away. Strong arms. 
skull. So core, legs, 30 seconds. If you have to drop one knee or two knees for a moment. Tuck the tailbone if there's excess pressure on your low back. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, two and a half. No, I'm just kidding. And bring it down. And come up and shake those wrists out. Let's bring the hands together. Interlace your fingers. Keep the palms together. And just do some circles with the palms. Sometimes that's a little challenging. More on people's wrists than their core. And really important to keep those hips pliable. I mean, the wrists pliable. I see a lot of people doing plank like this, which is not really good. Now you're solidifying that wrist joint and you're not making it supple in case you fall one day. You need to be able to know you could put that wrist out and save yourself. So back onto your back. This is a one minute move. If you wanna watch me first, arms out, okay, deep obliques. You're going to drop the knees to the side, straighten the legs. Straight up, bend, drop, straighten, straight up, okay? I want you the best you can, glue those legs together. We're almost through and getting to some nice long holds. Bend, drop, straighten, straight up, breathe. Doesn't help you to hold your breath. Good. This is also a little harder than it looks. If it's easy for you, get those feet when you straighten the legs to the side to hover over the hand. So you're really tight in the pose. Just a few more, 20 seconds. Last one. And up, good. Knees into your chest. And let's rock and roll. So all of those really focused moves. I just want you to flow a little bit and enjoy how warm your body is. So let's bring it up and back into your downward facing dog. Palms flat, fingers spread and walk your feet between your hands into standing forward bend and roll it up to standing. Arms are gonna come over your head, palms press. We're gonna do a chest lift, baby back bend, hips go forward, take a deep breath in, exhale, forward bend. Plant your hands. You're gonna walk or hop back to plank pose, whatever feels right, good. And chaturanga, knees up or down, and upward dog, and then downward dog. Stay here a breath or two, and looking forward, walk your feet forward between your hands, roll up to standing, arms overhead, palms press, baby back bend, maybe a little deeper this time. Exhale, forward bend. Plant your hands. Maybe your knees have to be bent. And walk or jump back. Plank pose. Take an inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. So you can bend the knees, pull the hips back, and float to forward bend, or walk it to standing forward bend, and roll it up. Let's do two more. Arms up, back bend, chest lift, forward bend. Plant your hands, float back, plank pose. Good, chaturanga. Upward dog, big stretch. And downward dog. A breath or two. Walk or jump, standing forward bend. Roll it up. Last one, best one, arms up and forward bend. Plant, 
plank, deep breath in, exhaling chaturanga, inhale upward dog, exhale downward dog. So bringing the feet forward into a squat or taking the wall, slide down the wall, back flat, shoulders down, feet flat. Let's hold about 30 more seconds. Letting go of some of that resistance. So you can get deep, deep, deep into the hips. About 10 more seconds. Can you pull the heart through more? Can you get the chin neutral, back flatter? The answer might be no. <laughs> it is what it is. And then hands down. You're gonna come onto your hands and knees and a few cat cows. Chin to chest. And then arch, chin is up. And another very nurturing thing for the back. If you're sitting a lot, you could even do this while you're seated. And let's come all the way down <clears throat> onto the belly for a sphinx hold. So we did a lot of abdominal work. Now we wanna stretch it out a little bit more. So measure out those fingers around your elbows so that I know your elbow is right over under your shoulder and then pivot the forearms out. Your shoulders will be open enough someday that you can get the forearms parallel to each other and the palms flat. So you don't wanna sink into the pose here and melt into your shoulders. You wanna push down into your hands and forearms, extend the heart forward, shoulders back. So it is a very active pose. It's like your, your arms wanna slide back really bad, but they're stuck in your mat. So it forces the heart through. If you wanna go deeper, you can try pushing into your hands and slowly straightening the arms. That might be too severe, or you might wanna just take a breath and then go back down, take a breath, until someday you could stay there for the entire duration of the hold. You probably feel like you're bent in half backwards right now, but if you take a look at me, it's not really that severe of a back bend. It feels deeper than it actually is. So about 15 more seconds. Shoulders out of your ears. You keep lengthening out of that low back instead of crunching into it. And then lower it down gently. Palms flat and up and back into child's pose. Ease the back. Head is low. And then back onto the back. I know it was a lot of slipping around today. And we're gonna go into a spinal twist and a shoulder stretch. So let's bring the left thigh over your right thigh. I always like to have some sort of spinal twist at the end to make sure we're just aligned properly and ready to roll for the rest of the day. Knees into your chest where you're gonna feel an exaggerated little left hip stretch right now and then dropping the knees all the way to the right. Reach and look left, left palm faces up. So very deep spinal twist, hip stretch. I feel anterior deltoid, front shoulder, chest. I even feel a little bit down into my bicep. Play around with where that left arm is in order to feel the best stretch for you. If you're a golfer, maybe you want to bring it up. If you have to work on your overhand with tennis, maybe you want it up or straight out from your shoulder. Let me release the resistance in your stomach on your exhale. The belly button sucks in toward your spine and you'll notice that allows you to twist a little deeper. Rather than gripping and holding tight in the belly and just exhausting yourself, resisting the entire 
stretch. So about 45 more seconds here. Watch your body sink in. more deep breaths. I could stay here all day. And slowly uncross the legs and come back to center. Knees bent, feet flat. So you might want to realign yourself. Before we do the other side, we're going to do a shoulder stretch. So take your left hand, this might be new to you, palm side down, underneath your low back, not your hips, because you're going to crush your hands, right in the small of your back where the back arches off the ground. Now you want to bring the wrist under just enough or the hand under just enough to cover the wrist joint. It doesn't go under all the way, just enough to cover that wrist, okay? So for some of you, this might be enough. It's a very localized anterior shoulder stretch, very deep, and don't push on the front of your shoulder. You could aggravate it. If you want to go deeper, you're going to drop the left leg to the left. See how that feels? If that's okay, drop the right leg to the left, stacking the legs. Okay, so knees bent, feet flat, and both legs will end up dropping to the left. It's very deep. We're stretching the muscles that cover the bursa sac in the shoulder. So if you tend to have bursitis problems in the shoulder, this will help a lot. Just be careful. And if you still want to go deeper, you're going to bring the right arm straight up to the sky, like you're raising your hand to ask a question, and then bring the right arm across your body. That's going to weigh you deeper into the pose. You're going to notice it right away. So I'm not very good at this one. My shoulders hold a lot of my tension. The goal here, even though there's no goals in yoga, I know, don't write me, <laughs> is to get the back of that left shoulder blade as low to the ground as possible. There'll be times you do the stretch and the shoulder is like right in your nose. You don't want that. So let's take one minute here of focused exhales where you release the shoulder every exhale. Let go of the tension that's holding you back from getting deep. Again, opening the front shoulder muscles to improve your posture. 30 more seconds. I used to get into this pose and just fight it for the two minutes I was in it. Now I'm learning to release and relax, not fight, get deep, let go. There's a magnet on my refrigerator that says let go or get dragged, right? Stop holding on. Let go. Let go of the muscle tension. All the blocks that hold you back. And then slowly back to center. Knees bent, feet flat. You might want to drop the knees to the right a little so you can squeak that arm out probably going to be annoyed at you right now. And we're going to bring the right thigh over your left thigh and knees into your chest. So feel that right hip right now. A breath or two and drop the knees to the left. Lying spinal twist on the other side. Reach and look right. Right palm faces up. So you want to open the shoulder. You don't want the palm down. That closes off the shoulder. And remember what we did on the other side. On the exhale, suck the belly button in towards your spine and see if you can let go and twist deeper.
longer inhales, more complete exhales. I like to push into my left elbow so I could pull the left side of my body out from under me and get the right side of my back and shoulder flatter to the floor. 20 more seconds. about one more deep inhale exhale your last chance to let go and uncross the legs and come back to center knees bent feet flat I'm just gonna scoot around so I don't give you my back so we're gonna do the shoulder stretch on the other side so right palm face down under the small of your back just enough to cover the wrist so I'm a righty right away I feel it's tighter so you might just want to stay here otherwise you're slowly carefully mindfully dropping the right knee to the right relax the shoulder and if you can both knees drop to the right I definitely feel a difference my right needs a little more time to let go we're working a very delicate joint the shoulder joint very shallow joint so a lot of instability we hear about shoulder dislocations more than hip dislocations right um, the hips have a lot of muscles deep thick glute muscles and leg muscles holding the hip joint not so much in the shoulder so i say this because when you're doing this pose if you decide to do it on your own which you just love it so much just be careful that you don't have little kids jumping on you or a dog or a pet jumping on you. That could be dangerous for your shoulder joint. So about 45 more seconds. Can you let it go a little bit more? Not sure if I said it, but if you want to go deeper, that left arm is up to the sky and across your body, especially as you sink in. 30 seconds. I don't like this pose that much, <laughs> which means I need to do this pose more, and that's the absolute truth. I don't want to do things I'm not very good at or that hurt. <laughs> So 10 more seconds. One more deep inhale, exhale. And then knees back up to the sky, feet flat. Drop your knees to the left a little so that arm can come out. And let's bring the arms down by your sides. Snuggle the shoulders under, palms face up. And just drop the knees left to right a little bit. Coming out of that last pose. Sometimes you get a little held. And then straighten the legs out on the floor into Shavasana. Your final pose of relaxation. Closing the eyes. Let's bring the attention to the belly which you so adequately worked today and start feeling the rise and fall of the belly with each breath trying to keep the chest as still as you can shutting down that fight or flight response and noticing the air the soft Cool air coming into your nose on every inhale. And notice how it's warmed, exiting the nose on the exhale. And then bring your attention to your arms and your shoulders. A 
of thanks that you're able to do all of that work that we did today. Somehow you found the strength not to stop, to build your stamina, your flexibility, your strength, your depth of breath. Bring your attention down into your hands. And once you do that, feel the heaviness, feel the vibration in your fingertips and your palms. As though you're holding a big ball. And for the next minute or two, I want you to inhale and think re. And exhale, think relax. So our mantra for this relaxation is relax. in the breath. Keep the awareness on your hands and palms. And together, take a deep breath in. Hold the breath. Take in more. And a little bit more. Let that breath steep in the lungs and like a French press coffee maker, exhale and push the air out. One more time, deep breath in and hold, take in more and a little more and exhale. Wiggling your fingers and toes, start to come back to your mat, to your awareness, flutter your eyes opened and closed. And when you're ready, you're going to roll over onto your right side and curl up into fetal position. So chin to chest, knees to chest. Take a big back expansive breath here. And your next breath comes up to seated, easy cross leg. Feeling that you're sitting on the hips, not in front, not behind. You're right in your body center. Deep breath in. Let's bring the arms up, tall back, palms pressed. Go ahead, look up. And keep that tall back and exhaling, hands into heart center. And namaste. Great job, everybody. See you next time.